Hey guys, welcome to Raven Grows. I'm Raven, and this is the first video in the On a Budget series. Here, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to start your own houseplant jungle and how to save money while you do it. Stick around to the end for some extra tips to make sure your plants have the healthiest start and hit that subscribe button so you'll get notified when more videos in this series are released. First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to gather some supplies. <clears throat> For this video, it's actually really easy. You're going to need some sort of Tupperware container or a jar or anything else that has a watertight seal. You're going to need some paper towels or some napkins or some cotton batting if you happen to have any of that lying around, if somebody sews. Or you can, you, you can even use regular paper. If, you, if that's all you have. And you're going to need some seeds. Today I'm actually going to be working with the catnip seeds. And you're going to need some dechlorinated water. Now, if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you a tip on getting free dechlorinated water for your grows. So putting this together is actually pretty simple. The first thing you're going to need to do is take your Tupperware container and find some way to fit one of your materials, I'm going to use the paper towels today, inside the container so that you can fold it over on top of itself. You're going to want to have a pocket of some sort. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take one of these paper towels, I'm going to fold it in half once, actually I'm going to fold it the other way, And then I'm going to fold it in half again. Now you see there's my little pocket. That way I'll, I'll be able to put something inside of there and close it down. So I'm going to set that into my container. I'm going to add some of my dechlorinated water. This is my on a budget watering can, which I'll show you in another video. Some of my on a budget tools and, and uh, ways to, to make this work when you just don't have the money to spend on extras. So what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to make sure that your, your material gets damp. You don't want it to drip. Okay, it's dripping, so that's a little too much water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other paper towel, clean just a little bit of that out of there. I've got it nice and wet. But it's not dripping. There's nothing running out of it. You're not going to have an excess of water. So I'm put that back into your container and open up that little pocket that you made. I'm going to take my catnip seeds. You can see that without the glare. <clears throat> and catnip is actually a really interesting plant. It um, it's in the mint family and. Of course, cats love it, but so do people. People use it for a tea. Now you can see, these are some really small seeds. Now I'm not going to use all of them. There's a whole bunch in that packet, so I've got a whole lot. But I'm not going to use all of them. I'm just going to take a few seeds. And catnip, in particular, needs to soak in water for 24 hours before you plant it. So you can see, I just sprinkled the seeds on the paper towel. I'm going to close the top of the paper towel down around them. Close the lid, and I'm going to put this someplace warm. It's actually a really simple pro process. The difficulty comes in the details. Too little water, and your seeds will dry out. Too much water, like I had earlier, as you can see I've still got a whole bunch on that extra paper towel. Too much water and your seeds are going to rot. They're not going to germinate properly. Some plants have very, very specific needs. Some need to be frozen before they can germinate. Some actually need to be in a fire and actually burn before they can germinate. Now those are some of your more exotic plants and we're not going to deal with those here. Most plants, however, need three basic things. They need moisture, they need a, the right temperature, 
and you need a good seed to start with. That's why you always get your seeds from a reputable vendor. You can buy them at Walmart, you can buy them at hardware stores even. But your seeds may not be viable, so you always want to get your seeds at a good vendor. So you've got your viable seed, you've got your moisture, and then you've got to get the right temperature. In this case, 60 to 70 degrees is going to be just fine. So we'll take this container and we'll put it somewhere in the dark. And with catnip seeds, it only needs to soak overnight. That's another thing that you need to look for um, for most of your seeds is a, the specific requirements for germination. And I'm going to be covering a series of uh, species-specific species requirements. So exactly what catnip needs, exactly what oat grass needs, um, and various other plants, and I'm going to give you an idea of how to grow them from seed or from cutting all the way up to a healthy plant. Plus, when you're growing your plants, it always helps to use dechlorinated water. Now this is not the water that came in this bottle and I'm not sponsored, but um, I use this bottle because I use it as a watering can. If you can see, I've got little bitty holes in the top, and that way I can break up the water and it won't disturb the surface of the, of the planting medium. In this case, the paper towel. So I mentioned using dechlorinated water when you start your plants. This gives them the best chance to start as healthy as possible. Most tap water has chlorine, chemicals, and other particulates in it, most of which are perfectly safe for plants. However, the chlorine was added to kill bacteria and other microbes in the water, making it safer to drink. This is well and good if you're drinking it, but giving it to your plants, it can kill some of the beneficial bacteria that live in your soil. Luckily, there's an easy and cheap, well, actually free, way to dechlorinate water. You take your regular tap water, fill up a container, preferably one that has as wide of a mouth as possible, And that's it. Easy, right? What you're going to do is you let your container sit completely uncovered, open, for 24 hours. Most containers, small containers like this jar that I have, or a watering can, or a bowl, if that's all you have, 24 hours is enough time to get almost all of the chlorine out. Enough that it's not going to be harmful anymore. Larger containers, if you're going to do a 5-gallon bucket, or if you're even doing a barrel can take up to five days. But for small amounts like this, just let it sit out, put it on your kitchen counter. Um, you'll lose a little bit of the water to evaporation, but you'll also lose all of the chlorine to off-gassing and evaporation. <clears throat> that makes it completely safe for your plants. Then when you pour this into your plants and when you have them potted, you're not killing the beneficial bacteria that live in the soil and help form beneficial um, relationship with your plants. You need those bacteria in order for your plants to be as healthy as possible. Anyway, that's the video for today. It's really simple, really easy to do, but it'll give your plants a really healthy start. Thanks for watching my video, guys. I know it was kind of a short one today, but I hope you found something, even just a little, that you could take away with you. Please don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you liked it or if you found it useful. It really helps some of these smaller channels to get off the ground. Maybe click on another video or leave a comment down below about what you'd like to see me cover next. Until then, see you later.